Alrighty. <sighs> so, we are back. Anyway, let me just redo my intro. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, as a guy here, into the CBL 2024 for the APAC group. Uh, for the APAC division and for the group stage. Right now, we have TFA versus YYY and SKT versus LBA. And these two, apparently, TFA and LDA have forfeited the first match because they didn't have enough members. Now, it has been a little bit of time. We're moving on to the next battle of the TFA versus YYY and SKT versus LDA. So do keep in mind, TFA lost the first battle, LDA has also lost the first battle, so YYY and SKT only needs to win this next one and they close out. It does look like SKT has everyone here, uh, SKT versus LDA has everyone here, so we'll see what battle we'll get to watch. Hopefully TFA versus YYY does kick off. Um, it would be very unfortunate if we do go for a uh, another forfeit for YYY. Could come down to a weird field battle. Looks like they're probably just getting confirmation right now. Normally, the allocated, um, previously in the previous versions, they would just be allocated to um, 15 minutes. So you would only get 15 minutes to get all of your guys, otherwise you would forfeit the match. There has been cases where they allowed, uh, where they allowed less than less than 15 members to participate. Alrighty, does look like we're going to go for the SKT versus LDA, and maybe we might see a... We might actually get a field battle on TFA if they accept the forfeit from YYY. Um, time allocated here is, is until 9.30 on the technicality that... Um, it actually is supposed to be only from 8 to 9. Nevertheless, I do hope we get to see an enjoyable battle. Nonetheless, I mean, 7.30 to 8.30, but yeah. Uh, so, we're waiting for the... Just waiting for the Observer Mode to pop up for the SKT versus LDA on Hidden City. I'm not exactly sure who's attacking and who's defending right now, but once we get in, we will know for sure. So... I always get the K wrong, but it's soy milk. Kyoi. Ah. Kyo. Gaogan. Kyo Gaogan? Team. Soy milk. Kyo Gaogan team. And then we have the little demon asses. We'll probably get official confirmation later, but. Right now, I think they're just worried about the battle happening for SKT versus LDA. Alrighty, come on, come on, come on. I don't know. I don't. Sometimes I wish there was like a timer, like 
he just had the observer mode just grayed out and it just had a timer on it just counting down to how long you have to wait so I didn't have to keep checking because the more I check the more I'm just like the more I'm just like oh god why isn't it triggered yet pretty sure it will probably trigger in like another minute or so It's always unfortunate when teams can't get their teams together, but it does happen. It's not. It's not the end of the world. I do hope we get a lot of good battles, and I do hope that people have fun while doing this. But there is some money on the line. Not exactly a lot when you divide it between 20 people and four. When you divide it between four, four regions, uh, three teams for a region and 20 people. So it's not actually a lot. Not to mention, you still have to kind of win or at least get to third place before you start winning something. Alrighty, Luca and Luca. Lucas and Luca. I've seen both of these, both of these guys. Looks like plenty of the Sunway coming out. Iron Reapers is a fascinating choice. I don't actually find them that strong in a sense that it's like they're not they're not surprisingly strong. Especially when you're facing up against something like Iron Reaper, um, something like Lancelot. I think Lancelot are better. I have a much higher performance than Iron Reapers. I definitely would choose them, Lancelots over Iron Reapers, except for like really extreme use cases. And hello, Mask Flame. How are you doing? You've come to watch. You come to watch the uh, battle with me. We've gotten double forfeit for the first match, and we're not unsure what's happening for this one right now. We're on here on Hidden City. We got Little Demon Ask attacking, Soy Milk obviously defending. Um, I'm not particularly sure what I can expect from both these teams but what is surprising is that we do have quite a bit of Wu Wei coming out from um, SKT like Wu Wei has been popping up but not as much as as people would expect also the choice of Iron Reapers as well is a bit surprising I've seen been seeing a lot of higher um, I've, I've been seeing a lot of teams kind of switch between either Iron Reapers or uh, Lancelots. I do think Lancelot, uh, Lancelot Knight's probably the stronger of the two. In a direct confrontation, um, I'm more, I'm more likely to bet on the Lancelots winning. Just from the sheer, just from the sheer fact that like they're pretty, they're pretty OP with that one second invulnerability comes in, coming in every second. I mean, coming ev in every seven seconds. Technically only six second downtime between the two. We've got one Metallator shooting this left hand siege tower. They are shooting the right hand one right now. I don't think uh I don't think they're destroying the middle one. Which is very fascinating. Normally, um normally when this strategy is deployed, they want the attackers to go up this middle siege tower. And I always refer to the middle siege tower as the Tower of Death because it is the worst siege tower on most maps to ever push. It, it's be, logistically, it's just the worst because if the defenders are already on the wall, you come up to a massive T junction, so you get sandwiched in the middle, no space on either side, and it's a hard turn left or right. If they completely cover the front of the siege tower, maybe it would be okay. But if you, if you're since you're coming off of the siege tower, you'll be coming into more of their guys than your guys can uh, hit. 
So the middle siege tower does make it. it. Does look sound like the battering ram also beats down the main gate. Not sure if they're poking their heads through. Doesn't look like it. Once more, I'm always weirded out by cannon deployment. I think I think there must be something to do with the cannons or the arcing problem. Even then, I, like, I'm not sure why cannons deployed behind in the back here is the choice. I do believe culverins are stronger, deal more damage. So for per artillery piece, I think it would be way better Nothing to deploy something like a culverin instead of the cannons. Interestingly enough, there's this literal halberdier here, and it has not been trebbed. That would be like an instant treb scenario. Surprisingly, they didn't put the mortars very close. Uh, you would normally put the mortars up to the protection, um, up to the line here. Uh, give me two seconds. I need to swat a bug. Really, Mike. You're telling me that cannons deal more damage? Like overall, or per shot, or is there, is there something I'm missing? Really? That's fascinating. I always thought that culverins were doing more damage, mostly because cannons uh, cannons deal roughly the same amount you know, on impact, but their explosion is about half as much, while culverins should be about the same amount as a direct impact, but deals just as much damage on explosion. So you still got that two hit thing. For certain, I also still think that uh, Culverin steals more damage. But apparently Mike here is saying that uh, Cannon's dealing more damage by about 2k more. That's pretty significant. We're only dealing we're only dealing roughly eight uh, around about 8k damage for blue culverins and uh, cannons. Ah, uh, well I do agree. Cannons are massive. Very surprising that LDA looking to go through the front gate here. Getting burnt alive by a couple of Caltrops and Liquid Fire. A switcheroo. Strange um, treb here right against the wall. They move to one side. Can they hold back the tide? We got the Phalanx moving up. Wu Wei and Imper um, Imperial Spear Guard there on the left hand side. Marches straight across, straight into the stream. Holding strong on the ISG from both sides, in fact. The Wu Wei from either side is dying out. We got some Iron Reapers pushing towards the left hand side, but Wu Wei does come up to reinforce that side and easily handling that assault coming out from um, LDA. SKT squashing that easily. Though I wouldn't say it did not come without cost. We did see a lot of heroes die out here for a Little Demon Ask. SKT probably, probably has a bit more up and up on terms of units. Oh, interestingly enough, it's actually not as big as I would expect. Uh, the unit, the unit difference is interesting because 
It's only around about 80? That could be roughly around about... What? Three or four? Three or four units? I, I'm pretty sure that it was a bit more dominant than that. I was, I was expecting probably a much larger margin for victory for SKT. The bad thing here is that they're not pushing the siege towers even as they're trying to push. They're going to go all in and this is exactly what SKT wants them to do because this will magnify their kind of their advantage by being on the defense. Oh, that is brutal. That is brutal. Getting tail cut off here. They do swing back. We got very threatening throws coming out from the and Militia, aiming for that back line. The entire front line just collapses down. Only the Sunway Phalanxes survive in the end. We see a couple of guys pull off. Does look like the A point will be captured, but right now the fight for the fight for LDA might actually just be cold here. The losses are just insurmountable. That was not even an even fight. Not even the closest. See the Wu Wei struggling to deal with the men at arms here. It looks like friendly fire just wiped out them both. Whoa! And the Lancelot's one second invulnerability comes in clutch as they tank a as they tank a um, treb shot. Not a fan. What makes you say? Oh, why don't you like SKT's strat? I think forcing the attackers in a bad position is a good strategy. It's definitely not fun to be the attackers in this case. They're definitely trying to just overwhelm Little Demon Ask, and Little Demon Ask doesn't really know how to deal with it. They're getting caught off guard a lot, and they're really not able to shore up their um, shore up their flanks. A lot of time for mortars and make pressure easily on wall slash gate plus trip. That's true, but like... Wait, hang on. SKT is doing this? Or you're saying that Little Demon Ask should be doing this? Because that doesn't make sense. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure what you're trying to say here, little uh I'm not sure what you're trying to say here, Mask. Oh, okay, yeah. I definitely think that Little Demon Ask had a lot of options. I just don't think they had the uh I just don't think they knew how to deal with it. A really good strategy that I don't think a lot of teams use very often is this gateway is really good protection against uh, siege siege stuff. And when they do come down, it's a really good position to be in. There's only about three minutes left, but this is probably going to be the last major fight as we've got plenty of halberdiers coming out from uh, Little Demon Ask. SKT just marches on straight through, knocking down that entire, entire army got massive formation here on the north side, but it will not stand against just a sheer number. Lancelot's clear up the main street, now going off through up towards the north as they slowly take out the last few. We are hitting on to two minutes. I do think those Falconetti gunners was a supreme, supreme scare tactic. I never like getting hit by Falconetti gunners. And when you got a massive pile like that, and they shoot directly at you, 
you just watch the number of units that start just falling down. One thing I do like about SK Keytrap is they still have 8 party left while defending, while holding A. Oh yeah, oh yeah. One of the best strategies is always to actually let the middle siege tower make it towards the wall, leaving you just the other siege towers to cancel out. And again, as you saw before, earlier on, death. Even as SKT came in late to defend, it wasn't even much of a contest. I mean, they just march straight on through into the back lines. Getting sandwiched like that really depends on how much space you got. So, uh, Little Demon Ask should should have really shored up in which direction was um, shored up their directions. Their flanks again, like. Exposed flanks here, which is super massive. Getting spawn killed right now. I do give the defenders a little bit of leeway when it comes to when it comes to spawn killing, mostly because defenders, um, their goal is to defend the point. Together we stand. Though I do think. It would be the mistake of the attackers to kind of be put into the situation in the first place. But yeah, SKT... SKT takes that easily. With LDA losing their other battle... We do have, we does seem like. Does seem like we're not going to get another battle between. We're not going to get another battle between TFA versus YYY. So we're not going to get another battle until an hour. I'm very, very unfortunate. No, in 30 minutes? Is it 30 minutes? Hang on, give me two seconds. Ah, yep, another hour. Alrighty. Let's just take a look at some of the scores here. Still not doing terrible, and that's the good thing. I think Little Demon Ass just needs to be a bit more proactive and to formulate a better strategy. Being caught on the back foot is not always the best, and... In hindsight, probably just can't do anything about it. This Glaive getting 12 assists. I feel sorry for him, but a lot of these team, a lot of these uh, members are getting a lot of assists. So it goes to show you that SKT is definitely, um, definitely working together much more. But when you're winning, when you're winning pretty hard, it's hard to not just participate. A lot of Sunway Phalanxes getting killed off here. I think Sunway Phalanxes are worth quite a bit. Or inflate the scores just a bit, because they're one of the larger units, and, again, Tier 5 as well. But probably easier to kill than um, most Tier 4s. Individually, I mean. Shortbow, surprisingly, actually. I didn't even notice this the first time around, but we got two shortbows coming out from... SKT. Uh, the chain dot is kind of, um, it's kind of a bit of half half. I do think I like Jewel Blade a little bit more, but that's that's again because I just don't like the chain dot very much. But even with even scoring at the bottom, Toxic Boy getting five kills. 
We got another seven with a spear. Great to see spear still relevant. I do still think they are pretty much one of the best horseback um, horseback heroes in the game. You got you follow your. I mean, like realistically, the only, there's only three classes that actually has special horseback skills, and that's um that's spear, pike, and glaive. Ranking them on horseback, I do think. Like, Spear is the best on horseback, followed by Glaive, then Pike. Pike is really just... I don't like the dismount ability on Pike. I think the dismount ability is overkill. Not to mention, that thing also causes knockback, which is pretty much insane to me. I definitely do expect... I actually didn't expect how easily SKT kind of mopped up that second battle. Little Demon Ask running through the front gate and not expecting a fight was strange. I definitely do think that they could have probably tried to preserve their forces a little bit more than they did. They should have just used a sacrificial screen and just run for it. The second guessing themselves, having to go back down, was probably one of the um, probably one of the tactical mistakes that they did. And as Mask Flame said before, there's plenty of ways. There's plenty of ways that uh, Little Demon Ass could have pressured SKT to get the towers on the wall. You really need. You really need to get other towers on the wall. As much as people kind of disregard the wall, it is still one of the most powerful, powerful uh, positions for the defenders. The defenders, realistically, could always defend the wall, and it would just be a massive advantage for them. Because the attackers simply don't have an easy time on the wall. Oh, it's Treb Central! Yeah, but they have to go up siege towers straight up onto a T junction. Imagine if you got a defender, uh, if you got a defenders on either side of that thing. No one, no one would want, no one would want to go on either side. And it kind of goes to show that it's really representative that when you go up onto that wall, you got to go in with force and a lot of it. You got to overwhelm both sides at the same time. Or at least overwhelm one of the sides and turn back around real quickly. As usual, we do see we do see the normal siege delay time here. But this is this is strange to me. The numbers the number count For all three battles, was that bad? The first battle did not seem that bad for the attackers. But this is showing almost two times losses? Little Demon Ask basically lost two twice their numbers in both of the fight, losing probably three times their numbers in the final fight, but... I thought they were quite even after the first fight, so there must have been the, there must have been some some higher tier some some larger unit um, things happening here. But yeah, massive advantage. That's almost uh, what? There's like five units on the conservative side, and probably up to eight units. And then you're just a whole unit up while they're, while they're literally like, only got one unit left. <laughs> and then you finish them off. Alrighty, I'll catch you guys in roughly around about 50 minutes, I would say, for the next set of battles. Hopefully, we get to see some battle, uh, more battles later, and there should be. TRT versus STD and Nomad versus AHH.
AHA. I'll be watching Nomad vs. AHA. Sorry if you guys wanted to watch TRT vs. STD. I do think, um, I think I've been watching, uh, TRT and STD a little bit too much. So, give some other guys a shot. Nevertheless, um, I'll catch you guys in a short little while. Hopefully, we'll get to see some exciting battles. So, uh, be right back.
And I hate myself. Again, with the muted. I mean, like, how long have I been talking? Uh, I've probably been talking the entire time. Oh, <sighs> thanks, Mask. Thanks, Mask. Anyway, thanks for telling me, and welcome back, everyone. Sorry for being muted this entire time. So, just so you know, that will <laughs> we're going to be watching Nomad versus... We're going to be watching Nomad versus AHA, and... Um, there is also the TRT versus STD happening, but we'll be watching Nomad vs. AHA. Earlier today, there was a very weird thing that happened, but apparently both LDA and TFA forfeited their first match because they didn't get enough players. TFA forfeiting their second match, YYY winning by default, but SKT winning against LDA um, on Hidden City on their defense, so LDA Losing their attack on the second round, losing completely to SKT, two to one, and that is that. <laughs> man, man, how the? I see more halberdiers and wuways than phalanxes, and that's a fact. Man, halberdiers and wuway getting spammed more than phalanx. Exactly. Even even among the tier five, even among the tier fives, I think Lan I think lancelots are beating. Even among the tier five, even among the tier fives, I think lancelot. I am streaming now. Yep. Pick another tier five. I don't even know. What to... Oh God. Everyone's just. Everyone's just like, oh my god, Phalanx is just like, oh my god, so OP, everyone should be using them. Uh. Yeah, the problem is, is that that's not what I've been seeing. The number of Phalanxes is just not true. Team team fight Zweihander is pretty strong, but barely picked. That's the thing, it's just like, Zweihander is like, I'll put it like this. You can win against Lancelots very easily with Zweihanders. You can win against Iron Reapers very easily with Zweihanders, especially in team fight scenarios. And I t <laughs> like there are definitely just so many factors when these teams are like com making their compositions, but like everyone like saying that Phalanx is OP, they get spammed. Oh, they're always used. We understand why they always get used. First of all, they're a long pike. Second of all, they are the best anti-cav unit we have in the game. Their mere existence just ir makes cavalry irrelevant. We watch cavalry run over everything else. Medals, halberdiers, halberdier sergeants. The the fact of the matter is, is that phalanx is not spammed. You get three or four of them. They're at the back of your line, barely doing anything. They only they only hold the line, which is being held by a massive front of like ISGs, Wu Wei, so like so many other units run in front of the phalanx in order to maintain the front line. And the phalanx themselves have massive gaps. Massive gaps of power. Between every Ares flurry. They're dealing half as much damage than every other unit. Like, there is no question on this. You can test the damage yourself. When Ares Flurry... When you're not Ares Flurry, you're not dealing any damage. In comparison to everyone else who has either much higher tankiness or much lower ability cooldowns or just deal more damage overall. 
units that'd be good against are things like um units that'd be good against are things that just probably do not outrange them and again you got a lot of exactly phalanxes are not front line they're not threatening enough to be front line they work well in teams they work well in teams because they have because teams can has the abilities to defend them from the absolute stomping they they would receive if they were at the front line you watch every single engagement where the phalanx is at the front line gets completely rolled not even not even a question not even a question anyway we're here on wallfort with aha attacking looking pretty Looking pretty mixed in terms of the tier 4 and the 5s. We're getting a lot of Wu Wei's coming out as well. Surprisingly, I did see um, I did see a human pop out. Even now, even now, there's, again, like, this is probably the most mixed I've ever seen CBLs. Is that a good thing? Kind of? I don't, I don't, definitely do think that, like, I definitely do think that, I, I'm, I question some people's picks. I'm definitely liking that apparently palace guards are being chosen. They might, they might be being chosen to replace the ISGs as terms of the, um, shield units. They got a much better assault, they've got a much better assault package than the ISGs, which makes it very... No, they have runes. So flying wombat. Um, the rules for CBL is no doctrines. There is runes, and you get two respawns. So you can die up to three times. So to make it very simple, there is three lives. You have technically three lives. Blood. I mean, sorry. You you have two respawns, and and you live three times. So you can only die three times because your third death w is your third death. You'll be thing. Yes, units do have mastery. So unit mastery is also in, and we have access to this this um, this season seasonal units. So that includes the Sunway and the companion cavalry, which I think is underappreciated. Companion cavalry is probably one of the more underappreciated units, and I could probably definitely. Um, definitely be more, um, be chosen, should be chosen more than the more expensive Zwanji Heavy Cavalry, considering that there is, considering that there is the option of having, um, phalanxes out on the field. Left hand side, B point, outer wall, not getting taken right now. We got all of the siege tower in danger of being destroyed very quickly, in fact. I don't even think I know how many shots are coming through. We got Falcon Any Gunners up on the wall here, probably shooting towards the bridge. Normally they sit on the uh, stairs here. We got a bunch of culverins as well. Smart idea to leave the um, to leave the siege towers extraordinarily damaged and only destroy it once they get to the thing. Uh, this will be very interesting how uh, I gotta change who I'm viewing because I don't definitely do not like that when that happens. Oh, this will be. Does it destroy the bridge itself? Surprisingly? It, oh! It doesn't destroy it at that time. Very good. Yes, there are definitely there are definitely units that benefit from doctrines. I think men at arms is is definitely a bait pick. Men at arms are frankly just not not any good, um, which is surprising considering how strong they are on live server with all the doctrines and stuff. But baseline, men at arms are actually not particularly strong and not particularly effective. The plus one. The plus one on charge doctrine, very important. I think the noble blood one is also very important, otherwise called the uh, ardent knight or the zealous knight. Those doctrines 
super important and some of the best doctrines that you can have for men at arms. But here on the CBL, because you don't have access to those doctrines, um, units that you would expect to s you you see a lot are actually much less. Um, I definitely think that I definitely think that Rattan marksmen have have this issue as well, where they're also too reliant on their poison doctrine. And it's their poison doctrine that's realistically no, absolutely not, absolutely not. I think adding doctrines would only spoil the uh, adding doctrines would only spoil the the uniqueness of CBL because one of the most important things is that CBL presents a very easy to see level of gameplay without having every single unit just be like super optimized and this over optimization of units causes a lot of things just to be go out of control. Easily, Wu Wei, one of the units that would just go instantly out of control. The Zhuangzi Heavy Cavalry easily could go out of control. Men at Arms easily goes out of control. As, we, as we've stated before, Doctrines change the dynamic of balance to an untenable level. Not to mention, there's just so many variations and Doctrines that, depending on what's available, you could seriously have a... Um, you could seriously have a very difficult time of understanding why certain matchups are different depending on how, um, depending on, depending on just unit, um, on doctrine selections. I think it would just be different in an in its entirety in the first place because frankly it's 15 people organized together to fight off against 16 other people 15 other people the amount of teamwork and level of teamwork is much different from any anything you would experience in normal sieges maybe you could experience it remotely with probably accidental teamwork but right now we have AHH forming up. Treb doesn't hit the back line, but it does friendly fire a couple of their Demez spearmen as it kind of walks their way around. We've got a mixture of palace guards and Iron Reapers charging out the front there. Wow, we have just Imperial Pike Punch straight in there with Iron Reapers. We've got Flamers and we've got RC, uh, we got the Zykelian Militia just throwing into that. The Phalanx getting burnt up, getting absolutely destroyed right now. But the Imperial Pike marches in and walks over the remainder. Strong performance out from uh, Nomads as they pick up the as they pick up the Men at Arms at the back line. You know, I did not realize just how just how much time there was left. Very unfortunate for those Lancelots. Just walking backwards is enough for the just walking backwards is enough for the Phalanx to uh, really just screw them over, allowing reinforcements to come in and clean them up. But the cat um, the the companion cavalry just kind of rushed in there. Killing themselves, uh, um, killing themselves uh, on the reinforcements, but do manage to pick up the phalanx unit. Hero battling on the A point right now. We got Wu Wei's from both sides creeping up, spinning up. Bam! Does look like a strong start for AHH. Keeps on going for it. Imperial Pike Walk, but the flame is also burning through. A nice. A nice poke poke from the Ares Flurry from... We also have a Halberdier unit on the left hand side moving up. Could be a big sacrifice here from Nomads as they're streaming units in. Imperial Spearguard also trying to hold their line but getting pushed back by another Imperial Bike Corps. And the Phalanx do fall flat. Realistically you should, you should try to keep those Phalanx at the back maximizing that range. We also have the Flamers here finally appearing again but it gets instantly deleted. 
Oh, interesting. Stab, stab, stab. Does take out quite a few of those Lancelots. But Lancelot now getting stuck with that stun on Brace. We're seeing... We're seeing a good... Good hold right now. I think Nomads should have cut their losses at some point. That push was fairly unsuccessful. A lot of time has been gained. An additional three minutes. Surprisingly, Nomad has a Phalanx unit here in, in a very weird... Weird spot. Um, not entirely sure. Whoa, we have the hero just going in on it. Once on top, I don't think uh, I don't think the phalanx is gonna survive. Belthagor for nomads gets taken out. Some ballistas now being deployed. B point is now also getting captured, but it does look like the polex. Oh, he thought about it. His horse gets taken out. As some other heroes dive in on him, but do not make it. Very unfortunate. Gonna have to back off now as reinforcements come to protect your good old Polax. How much health does he have? Ah, oh, he's fairly healthy. He did not take any damage at all. A lot of time lost for AHA. Um, very tough battle. Very tough battle. Coming up onto that siege, um, coming from that siege tower, only to get demolished as you appear. But we are looking, we are looking um, a little bit down for for the attackers. The the advantages are uh, only oh, the advantage is pretty big. About 120 units, by the looks of it. That's enough for at least four Phalanx units, or probably much closer to five or six. Do keep in mind, the defending side has a lot more tier four units. Maybe the difference in tier can make up for their discrepancy. But you're gonna have to see, watch these battles come out. We've got plenty of artillery coming out for AHA though. I don't believe that uh, it, it is wise to sit out in the, um, sit out and just tank shots like this, especially for things like men at arms. They're at least more useful than your Demez spearmen. At this point, I would probably bring out some surf units. You probably have some surf units that could just waltz around here, uh, particularly free. We also got some counter mortar fire coming out. But the men at arms and the spear, the men's spearman does get taken out. It's a small, it's a small pickup, but it's still a pickup nonetheless. Looks like the shot hits the phalanx unit, but the blue shield protects it, so it's pretty good. People underestimate that blue shield, but especially for like the mortaring phases, you can definitely kind of present the phalanx, have it get hit, run away. And you don't lose any health at all, because it also cleanses off any kinds of debuffs, so mortars uh, burning gets cleansed off pretty easily. But because of the amount of time Nomads gained early on, this could be... This could be a fight for the finish here. Phalanx unit beats up a shield. We're here at the front. Phalanx does get taken out. Companion cavalry goes in from the front, but there's a Phalanx unit right behind that shield. Phalanx is retreating backwards as the Imperial Pike March advances. Does look pretty bad for Nomads. Uh, getting outranged by the Phalanx is probably not the best idea. Realistically, your Phalanx units got taken out, but they still have their Phalanx units. Range advantages does come in huge, and comes in clutch for the attackers. Clears off the point right now, and I think they're kind of chasing down the heroes, maybe. We've got some heroes in the back line. 
Not sure what's happening. Another mole goes down. Cavalry does come in, swings around to sweep up the two heroes. Whoop, well, there goes the other one. With the base point and the C point getting captured, did look like a massive flip. The uh, tier five units, tier five units making a complete mockery of the tier four, lo killing off, killing off almost 200 odd units. No, more than 200 units. That that was like a that was almost like a 300 unit loss compared to. Wow, like 50. AHA, so massively up. I don't think they can lose. It would, it would basically be a miracle if Nomads could pull off a defense here on the base point right now against uh, AHA. And it just goes to show you that really the teamwork is necessary to kind of just complete complete the uh, roundness of team compositions. Being by yourself will always end up will always make you end up on the losing end. The phalanx by itself is just not strong enough. There are certain units that could that could possibly be designed. I mean, like shield units are designed to just tank hits, so. You could get a could get away with just shield units just being out by themselves, but the phalanx unit is not is not a shield unit, although that uh, big old shield might trick you. I don't believe it's tank. I don't believe it's tanky enough in even in the slightest. We got some rattan marksmen also in the mix here, setting up a wall defense, but it's going to be a small trickle. Canyon Cavalry kind of just swinging back and forth at the rear there. We've got a battle on many fronts as Surfs kind of distract the back line. Diving straight in, trying to take out that Rattan Marksman. Finally moving forward to the Mez Spearman. With the Rattan Marksman being taken out, I definitely do not think that... Um, I definitely do not think Nomad's going to be able to turn it around, but... The uh, the losses are just insurmountable, and whatever units they did have available, just got it, getting crushed was uh, not optimal. But what can you do against just just the sheer number coming out? Uh, Asia Pacific, the Asia Pacific region, otherwise known as the Oceanic region. Just the heroes now, lasting a few seconds longer. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Down goes another. Go down the musket. Congratulations to AHA winning their attacks. I do think that Nomads did masterfully on their delaying tactics. Um, pretty good catching AHA in a very bad situation over extending for the A point and definitely just not setting up that C point right. I think the bombardment made Nomad too scared to kind of mass up for that C point leading to a trickle effect where just a couple of units rocked on through and they just kept getting wiped, wiped, wiped Although, as you can see here, it's very surprising how big of a loss the uh, extended A fight was. Realistically, probably turning over the advantage they gained from the single tower wall push. And of course... Finally, the last two battles was... Actually, the um, I didn't expect AHA to lose as many. Uh, AHA lost more units than I thought they did. I thought they only lost about 50. Um, but 300 units was... 300-odd uh, units for AHA. I mean, 
for Nomads here on the defending side. Probably about 150 for the attackers. Man. You can definitely tell that AHA has probably got a much better, much better um, aggressiveness coming out from them. They don't hold back for the most parts. They've got some position. They got some positioning. Uh, they got some positioning skills. So they kind of, they kind of flex both attacking and defending. But next, we should be watching Nomad attacking this time. I do. I think Nomads are probably one of um, probably going to be a team where they'll probably do better attacking than they do defending. But depend. Um, but seeing how flexible AHA has been, I think it's going to be a tough battle for them, regardless. STD is still going, or is this the second battle? I'm just going to just take a look at some of the other guys who are probably watching the. Yep. Ugh, dang it, ads. I'm sorry. Oh. Does look like they're loading into their second battle. SCD winning their first battle on Hidden City. This time they're defending. Hmm. Interestingly enough. One thing I do want to also point out is that a lot of times the range units that people do bring are not are not taking an aggressive enough stance. They're normally reserved until the very end, and I feel like that's that's not a good way to use them. Mostly because you if you're gonna reserve them like that, you you gotta expect them to have a big impact. Units that you should reserve are probably things that are short ranged or again a very fragile but even then range units can't exactly get their value unless they really skirmish with the enemy the rattan the rattan marksman should have probably been first one um probably should have been trying to shoot the uh, enemy as they were walking up towards the platform this way that even just a few shots any on just a couple of them would have been very um would be hindering the attacking team by a fair margin. But I think most teams will opt out of not using ranged units because it's much better. Worse than range units plays, what triggers me the most are the cav inting from what I can see. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the amount of cav that just runs straight into pikes is hilarious but the problem is it works that's that's the that's the dumb thing i how to say cavalry is so strong that even against their direct counters they don't exactly lose on b it didn't work yeah but the fact that it happened like, you watch, you watch a lot of these battles, you see strong units that are good against cavalry, halberdiers, phalanx units, 
And for some reason, it's just like, oh, they're slowly chipping away at this unit, and just like, that's gonna be a problem. And then, like, by the nth cavalry, they just roll straight through. <laughs> so, at what point do you just go, wow, like, did they do well, or was that really stupid? Regardless, I think it's just really stupid, but if it worked, it works. And... People will int cavalry, because it, it it's successful if you throw enough cavalry. And the problem with cavalry is that their, their, their performance is exponential. Just taking out the anti-cav, one cavalry unit could easily just continuously kill everything else. If you if you if you just take out all of the anti cav units and you just have a cavalry unit still left over, he could mop up everything. I've seen it happen. One one Zonji heavy cavalry. There's no there's no uh, anti cav left, but it mops up three different Lancelot units, a lot of serfs as well. They do some damage, and I think that's especially true for companion cavalry, like trigger hunter's prey response. For me, it's stupid as well. They could do so much better by just waiting for a bit, use space, but nope, they rush into pike. Oh, for sure. I think a lot of teams have degraded because of the hard counter kind of thing. Where sometimes you just gotta send it because even just a small effect could have a big impact. But the battles are just so fast that I think a lot of players can't gauge the logistics of things. And this this goes this goes to show that like people who play for attrition um, really knows how to be on the um, really knows how to take advantage of the enemy composition, but a lot of these teams are just fighting to win it. They're not fighting to win the next battle. They're fighting to win this battle. And I think that's why you get a lot of desperate response, where so many times teams overextend. They're expending units that they could preserve, especially, like, rotations. Rotations are sloppy. Rotations are sloppy. They sacrifice units where I think they could have probably preserved it for a better time. But you should definitely swap out to a, um, a full-strength unit at, and make sure that you always always at a full strength unit at, at whenever possible but i know that it's not always possible sometimes you're going to be that one shield guy that has shields and it's just like i have to be at the front but i've taken like 20 mortar shots and it's just like oh my god my unit's almost dead but you have to be there for your team your team's not going to just be like yeah go get a new unit no they're going to be like leave your unit here go get a new unit we need them here screening for us Hi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Alright, so just to recap really quickly. Earlier, there was the SKT versus LDA. SKT wins. FD, um, TFA versus YYY. YYY wins. Now, the problem with the first set of matches was that um, LDA forfeited their first match because they didn't have enough players, lost their attack against SKT, so SKT only had to win a defense there. TFA forfeited both matches, so YYY won by default. Right now, we're watching the second match of Nomads versus AHA, and... Oh, he didn't load in or what? Um, we're watching the second match of Nomads versus AHA. Nomads losing their defense. So AHA could close it here and just win on the defense. Now, Nomads did a pretty good job at the beginning, but just 
the losses were just insurmountable by the time by like like the time was ticking down so aha just needed to just just needed to just push on through nomads just needed to slow down aha just enough so that they could bide for more time but in the end they like nomads kind of overextending too much trying to just win the fight especially when you're at a disadvantage you shouldn't be rushing headlong into the enemy Now, there is also the battle with TRT with STD. Um, STD won their first battle. Does look like STD is now on the defense, so they won their attack. So TRT needs to win their attack in order to send it to a grassland. Now, hopefully Nomads also wins their attack. So we do get down to a gra um So we also goes down to a grassland. Surprisingly here, we got no one... Oh, we got one person, Henry here, from Nomads... Tr probably taken out these siege weapons these siege weapons are fairly uh, annoying especially for this left hand siege tower but they don't use it to destroy by the looks of it the right hand siege tower is going to get up onto the wall just a little bit of skirmishing probably stock standard siege stuff that everyone is familiar with so we're not seeing anything particularly special nomads here uses a lot of tier four so they have an, an innate 110 unit advantage but just for the total number of units they're up around about just 200 units just by default like what 887 and this is 739 so 150 units realistically we got to see some very spectacular units. I definitely do think that Mermiolones is one of the underappreciated units that could substitute for heavy shields, particularly in this setting. Yeah, panic charge all the way. Treb does hit. A point is getting captured for free. Let's see if a B point also gets captured for free. The wall break is not down. The bridge is not broken either. So Nomad is going to get those for free. Does pick up an extra three minutes for the A point. I think the B point is also an additional three minutes. Now Nomad did get a lot of time by fending off the attack the last, um, fending off the wall the last time. But AHA is going for. The sac um, just sacrificing the A and the B point for now, and going to weather the storm of going to weather the storm of artillery. I would agree. I would agree. I think I think there are merits and demerits for a lot of units. I think IP, um, I think Palace Guards have been chosen a little bit more for the higher teams to substitute, uh, to substitute a lot of the heavy shield units that would have been selected. Though that doesn't stop people from bringing ISG. I just don't know why they keep them in top line veterancy. I know that they have a little bit higher, what you must, uh, a little bit more damage resistance especially range damage resistance but that doesn't affect artillery and by the looks of it i don't think anyone brings that much range now one of the one of the weird things that i would have uh, would do sometimes is i would destroy all of these i would destroy all of these um palisades wooden walls and kind of kind of just have a couple of ranged units just like sitting behind this walls block it off infantry here just very interestingly just like if the enemy decides to sit in this section not sure what they're shooting at with that treb there i don't think they've gained very much in the time that they've been mortaring so nomads should be looking should be looking to try something else um, there's no shame in just accepting that your mortars have been useless. No need to just shoot all your mortars until, again, you use all the ammo. You could save it for other times or other periods of times where the enemy is more vulnerable. 
But I think uh, Nomads probably just doesn't know what to do in this scenario. We also have six we also have six artillery still available for the defenders, and they're very patient here. Again, being on the attacker side can afford them patience. We also have another treb going for the artillery here. What was it be? Probably a culverin. Does look like a culverin does get destroyed. Fascinating to see a shield mating coming out. One of the one of the underappreciated buffer units that can really um, can really add to a push. Not spectacular by themselves. Ever since getting kind of like power creeped a lot, they're still a decent unit, and they will beat out quite a few of the tier fours that we are seeing around. I think they're no slouch against the men at arms if you do it right. Nomads walking up towards the supply point. Now, this is where it gets a bit dangerous. Both sides will probably size each other up. Nomads has cavalry kind of poking around towards the C point. Getting a little bit of cap. Could see that cavalry going straight onto those Iron Reapers. Leaves them alone, surprisingly enough. We got some grape shots. And we have some Falconetti gunners pushing them straight off of that supply point. I think this is a really good start. Just needs to play it slow. Nomads don't need to rush. But right on it. Strong lines right now. We have both sides shooting with Falconetti gunners, but this front line here smashes open the... Well, just the side of the um, ISGs here. Iron Reapers going deep into the lines. Surprisingly, both sides kind of just attrition out heavily here. The Mermiolona is still holding strong. Iron Reapers finally um, beat out the leftover Wu Wei. Let's see if the Phalanx can defeat the Iron Reapers. Doesn't look like the Iron Reapers are kind of going weird, funny. But the Iron Reapers do go down. Mermiolones does trickle on through and smashes smashes another line. Nomad's doing a really good job locking up this supply point. I definitely do think that there's been some things happening in the background as a Daggerak Lancer kind of just gets cancelled by a Halberdier unit. Another interrupt, but no reinforcements right now for... Oh, Nomad's reinforcements here is coming now. Gotta take out those Mermiolones, otherwise the continuous charge might proved to be a problem. Whoa, Iron Reapers gets pulled out. Men at Arms tries to block the attack. We got some Zwanji Heavy Cavalry, probably gonna look for a flank soon. Probably could squeeze in from the side here if we can get some more infantry on the line. But the Wu Wei versus the um, Men at Arms, I mean, Men at Arms and Iron Reaper combo here loses, in fact. So actually, Heavy Cavalry kind of swung around and just deletes that entire section of the Phalanx units. Surprisingly, with the Halberdier support, reinforcements comes in strong, but still, again, more trickle on through. Both sides sacrificing a lot of units, but I think this is going to be go. Um, this is not going to go well for AHH. They do. Whoa! One trip smacks right into the center of that Demez. The companion cavalry does get taken out by most of the by most of the phalanx units, but phalanx unit versus phalanx unit right now. Which one's winning? I think it would be the side that has a supply point spawn off three more units. Unfortunately, Nomad is not throwing any more heroes on top of that point. Not able to get onto that point. Very unfortunate as cavalry now starts coming out. The tidal wave of infantry just rocks on through the, um, the Phalanx unit and the Halberdier unit. Easily taking both of them out. Nomad is not slowing down though. They're throwing in another set of units. I would be scared to know if how many deaths these guys have. 
Nomad definitely has more hero death than um, AHH, but they still have that supply point and not an advantage gained. Both sides losing heavily, but the tier 5 units um, used by AHH surprisingly kind of edges out. Remember that there was around about 150 advantage for Nomads, and now with the that advantage gone, we're looking at an almost dead, uh, no, not even, the defenders are probably up by a unit or two, and this is really bad, because no Nomads needed to get some kind of victory after such a long fight. And if they're not winning on attrition, they're definitely going to have to be strong, winning every single fight from now on, and not by a small margin. I mean by a big margin. Need to make up for those uh, two to three units that they're probably down right now. Especially since more tier five units out from AHA, which is definitely be cause for concern. We definitely do see a menace here of the Rattan Rangers, but we got a lot of shields in front. Not protecting this, uh, not protecting this Halberdier unit as it kind of gets circled around. This is probably going to be the fight for the finish, as this is a good, this is, this is a kind of good bleed out. Let, letting, letting the enemy kind of slowly attrition out. Super well done from Nomads right now. Sacrificing very little units for big gains right now. Just gotta clean up the remainder. Let's see if they can close it out strong. Gotta be careful as well. We've got plenty of cavalry looking for those flanks. Keep this uh, phalanx onto your flanks. Unfortunately, does get caught by the companion cavalry. Danya Dow's out on the field. Very first Danya Dow's I've seen. Plenty of pike units from both sides. The infantry is losing. Big formation. Whoa! Support pulls off. Lancelots might win. Grayson. Absolute mayhem on every side. I just hope that nomads keep keep their heroes alive. There's, that's one of the more, more important things. With 2 minutes 40 seconds left to go, I think Nomads do an amazing job right now. If they can just keep the supply point occupied, the reinforcements would be too late before they clean up this force here. Lancelot, just go in! Boom! Finishing off the Phalanx units right now and the Halberdier mix. Solid onto this point. I definitely do think a retreat coming out from um, AHA is in order, but serious, serious manpower was used by both sides, and I definitely do think Nomads pulled back that deficit, and that was super well played. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. You can. You can definitely pressure the enemy. The, uh, the the rattan marksman slows down the enemy approach, harassing them the entire way. Excellent trip, smashes right into the center of their lines. And we also had we also saw that they had um, the Zykelian militia. Now we still have one more point left to go. There was only four minutes thirty seconds left to go. Do not count AH8 out. There's still a lot of tier two units available, and have to remember that Nomads drag back a little bit of advantage here. Not not a little bit. They actually drag back a lot. <laughs> but I just I just want to make sure that like as we get close down to the wire, the number of units that are important just get beaten out by the number of heroes. So if there's still 15 heroes on the board. A single unit of tier 5s might not change anything because there's so many surf units that can be deployed. These Zykelia militias are still available, so this they will definitely deal with the Rattan pikemen really easily. We got one artillery left for Nomads. Nomads go for a left hand side push. Very fascinating. 
Iron Reapers versus Lancelot. Lancelot's just easily sweep that up instantly. We Pike Militia, in fact, would be an ama do an amazing job right now. The slow would be insane. We still also have the Phalanx unit from both sides. Here comes the Phalanx unit from AHA. AHA now just being super aggressive, trying to plow their way through, straight through the um, enemy units. But I think they made a fatal mistake here in trying to counterattack the Nomads as they take the supply point. You don't have very good units. I don't know why you were trying to defend the supply point at this very last second. But now, with that remaining force swept up, we got a couple of hero kills coming out onto the base point, but just the majority of Nomads are now coming out towards the base point, collecting up those last few heroes. Ten odd heroes died at one point, and I was not able to capture all of it. We still have the Iron Cap Swordsmen still around. I mean, Iron Cap Scouts straight onto the... Uh, Pike Militia, surprisingly actually carving a strange path through the formation, but collecting up, just just getting collect up, collected up by the Medals and the Sunway Phalanxes. Just well done, Nomads. I mean, I was considering you out through that halfway point after your failed assault onto the supply point, but that was brilliant absolutely brilliant that's the kind of that's the kind of teamwork i want to see from teams that makes me excited because you could feel the pressure on aha as they were trying to push in to nomads but it was just not successful a lot of the cavalry as well shoring up your flanks that's when you have a good composition and you make a very good, a very good formation. Really, really, really keeping keeping your flank secured is important, super important. And you're winning on the front. That was also really great. And when everything comes together, it looks amazing. Now, I want to also point out some other things that I'm just, just noticing right now is Tranfam, the chain dart out from Nomads, getting 15 kills. That is a masterful number of kills here on CBL, in especially because there is only you only have three lives per death. There is 45 possible hero kills you can get in a CBL match, and he has gotten 15 of them. That he is he is one third the enemy team right now. Yes, the field battle is going to come out shortly. I do think they're preparing for it right now. But let's take a look at the kind of performance out here. A little bit of trickle. I think it was just a bit of bunch of surfs. Major battle here for the supply point. But it was such an extended fight that the two that the that the extension made the made nomads lose quite a bit of their advantage. But they weren't. They went down that much. And of course, this battle here was the major one. On to that left side of C. You can just see... You can just see the difference. You can just see the difference. Just outscale the graph here. I would say I would say they'd probably picked up more than 2 to 1 here. Way a little bit more than 2 to 1. And obviously winning that final push but only by a small margin there was not very many units left anyway so that is a good good fight coming out from nomads and i'm hoping to see a good fight from both of these teams on the field battle i'm excited now because it definitely showed that match definitely showed definitely showed that nomads could bring it together that Nomads definitely got a strategy on how to deal with AHA. Now, can AHA adapt? Or will they be more aggressive, try to break apart Nomads formation? Will Nomads formation survive? Or will they make the same mistake that I think a lot of teams do, is be aggressive as well? But nevertheless, 
when both sides are using the same style, whoever has the better, <laughs> the, whoever has, um, it, it comes down to one-on-one -on -one engagement, so skill level really comes important when you got two teams that have the same style. I think if Nomads keep kind of the formation slow pace style, try to get that kind of get that flexibility in, we could see a very, very good cool performance out from Nomads. Field battles are a little bit sketchy though, because I'm I've never really I've never really seen infantry heavy field battles do too well. Normally what we see is that the side with more cavalry edges out, edges out in a lot of small skirmishes. So I'm expecting AHA to take advantage of kind of their cavalry usage. They do take advantage against nomads against cavalry here. So I'm really hoping that, I'm really hoping that now that it does come down to a field battle, nomad has a strategy to deal with, to deal with um, just the number of cavalry that they're going to expect on the field battle. Field battle is the real test of strategy, like both attacking. Yeah. The field battle is the ultimate is the ultimate playing field. I think I think I like sieges because there's some formula to the match. And there's definitely it forces the teams to take different strategies. On field battle, teams can take the same strategy. And see, and the only deciding factor of who's better at it, I mean, who's better, is, again, skill. So the team compositions and skill level of each individual player comes into... On field battle, it's it's a much, 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 much higher bar to reach, I would say. Good teams in Siege can work wonderfully well, because there are definitely just... It's, 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 Siege is more strategy than it is skill for me. The how I see it. Where, when I'm just comparing it to field battles, there it is. Field battles is definitely where skill can shine. Skill can shine, because player independency is just huge on field battle map, and decisions uh, on, on, as a wider team can definitely cause a lot of cascading effects. And I'm not sure if you guys were here for it, but yesterday's battle was just on the on the field battle was mwah, just magical. I was so giddy with um hype and adrenaline it was almost it was almost like i couldn't calm down afterwards it, and the next battle afterwards was just super exciting to watch as well so we should shortly get the good times in yes please here we go Nomads versus AHA on the field battle. Tiebreaker! Definitely did look like STD did win their battle against um, TRE. But we want to know who is better between H -A, um, AHA or Nomads. Stardust. TSD and Stardust. So, again, they purposely did that. I have to, I mean, like, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the acronym, or I'm going to call them Stardust constantly, so, yeah. Don't blame me. Also, when I, when I hosted the, when I commentated for the ECL in-house tournament or something, they had Putaran and Dumaran, and I mean, like, apparently <laughs> those are swear words, so don't report me. But I don't know. Just, just, just make up a name where I like. I don't get in trouble for saying it, please. Now, the surprising thing here is I'm seeing a flip. <laughs> I expected cavalry to come out from AHA, but 
more cavalry came out for nomads than AHA. So that's surprising. Man, I bet you guys would hate it if you if you guys knew that I'm actually like. I actually am. The Red Dynasty lost its throne many years of waiting, hoping for a final day of revival. Finally, the Dawn Sentinels. Okay, congratulations to Nomad. So, a long congratulations, Method. So good, everyone. Yep. Go Nomads. Love Nomads. I'm just using Google Translate really quickly. Love Nomad is. Love. Pass chicken? Okay. Don't understand that. Who is that guy? I have no idea. Oh, man. Sorry for whatever happened there. Nomad still sticking with that Rattan Marksman. Definitely does do think I put pressure on the enemy. Smashes the... Masters that barricade into oblivion, and I think it does pick up the uh, some of the ISG, but that was a waste of a cavalry. We see some Orochis out on the field, very surprising, but the Zykeeling militia just kind of blows up that entire pile. Most of the most of the Rattans kind of just get burnt down as well. This one's always a bit of awkward to view. Now, AHA doing a wonderful job at staying strong right now. Weathering the storm of cavalry just circling around them. Um, no man's off to a bad start, I would say. Lots of cavalry. Now, if they just use if they just use their range advantage a bit more, that would have been probably much better. Though the Shen the Shenji and the um the Zykeelo Militia really did mess up did mess up the um, Nomads here. And their infantry formation was quite much stronger because a lot of the um, a lot of the other members from Nomads was looking looking around with cavalry. I definitely do think they should have chose chosen to avoid fighting, especially um, especially in that scenario. They could have gone for a more um, could have gone for a more, uh, whoa, did he die? No, he didn't. I saw a longsword there and he survived. We have an AHA member just hiding in the side there. Does this look like a medal just again holding back. Now this is the kind of thing where it's just like if if Nomad's just decided to just take the fight here at the back. Because I definitely think it would it could come out go out well. And something like this. Oh man. It's a bit awkward in this like small crevice area, though. Um, I would I would challenge I would challenge that with companions. Definitely think that uh, men at arms versus companions, um, you you could win that easily. Storm pound straight into uh, men at arms, you would win, hundred percent, one hundred percent. For some reason, when they do tournament, when they do the tournaments, I really don't like them. Who are you talking about, Stracy? Both sides do get access to artillery, so it's best to make use of them when you can. But let's see what kind of strategy. Oh! I do love myself some bow riders. Good. Oh! Can this be a pickup?
I think, I think did not take out the, uh, I think going in too deep now. We got three heroes straight onto the Iron Cap Boat Riders. Whoa! Can Companion Cavalry just sweep in? Whoa, just swinging around there. Where did those Companion Cavalries come from? Oh, dang, more catch. This is where some some ranged cavalry coming in clutch right now. Some more rattan marksmen beating out the Orochis there. Big smash, probably not the smartest idea. Stab, 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 Iron Reapers right on top of the men at arms here. Whoa! These Wajir Heavy Cavalry sweeps up both of the meta, um, both of the Phalanx units. Oh, golly! Another Phalanx unit comes out for AHA. Iron Reaper is still tanking shots here. Could clean up this center section if we can get these uh, get these blue units on top. Finally, now moving forward, but a big mortar shot straight into the center of that formation. Can we get a charge from the Mermilones? Oh, Mermilones going in for a charge right now. We're looking at a bit of a cleanup crew now. Very slow as both sides picking their fights. Reinforcements coming through. That Phalanx unit is not moving. Is the controller dead? No, the controller is not dead. Whoa, Zwanji Heavy Cavalry comes in from the rear, cleans that up just a little bit, but gets caught on the back, um, on the reverse. Nomad's doing very well, very well right now. I think, I think they should hold on just a moment and just kind of reestablish themselves. Making good use of range to harass the enemy. Forcing the enemy to fight is very powerful. That's what ranged units do. They force the enemy to fight. But cavalry makes cavalry makes everything very flexible. We got some companion cavalry out from nomads here on the north side. Could just see a two to one battle. I'd definitely take it. But we have Keshigs versus Companion Cavalry. Keshig looks to be on the losing side right now, coming in with a second sweep. Keshig gets swapped, um, getting swept up. Oh, the heroes from both sides get cleaned, get cleaned up as the main force from AHA just kind of builds up for a fight. We've got some s smoke bombs coming out, and a third? Holy cow, and a third? Rattan Marksmen coming out. Really loving those Rattan Marksmen. They are quite infuriating to deal with. But unfortunately, it does take a massive shot from a mortar, I believe. Regardless, still keeping up pressure. And we have Cavalry also sweeping, swinging around the backside. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but... Um, looks like a heavy loss for... Heavy loss for... Nomads here. Very fragile units range, but can be so, so goddamn impactful. With the artillery still out, I would definitely be afraid to kind of poke my head around. But if, you, if those, as they peek, as they peek, they're shooting bullets into that. That's not something, that's not something you want to take for free. Can the formation hold? This is really cool. We've got, we got swan, we got... Boat Riders right on top of the um, enemy artillery. Halberdiers barely holding on. Wins against the um, wins against those. Wu Wei. They're using their own artillery against them. AHA getting bombarded and losing the fight there. The um, the Mermulonis doing an amazing job. Just just standing there. I think the I think the main shield was the Iron Caps. 
And I did not notice either that there was a cap at the B point, I mean at the base point. An absolute advantage now gained for... Absolute advantage now gained for Nomads. Nomads does seem to have this in the bag, two minutes left to go. And AHA just does not seem to have the forces. We got some men-at-arms out here, just getting killed by Solemnsheds! Wow! Nomads bringing, bringing out all of the surprising units. Whoop! Could see a swing. Swings out in front of the unit. Both, both guys die, surprisingly. Solemnsheds gets gets uh, killed off. But with a minute 30 left to go, base point capped. Less than a minute 30 to go. I think Nomads could push their advantage. Fight fight the um, fight AHA away from the point. Don't need to make it don't um don't need to make it desperate, but definitely slow them down. Every second they're not trying to capture that base point is um capture that point is just another second loss. Still. On a technicality, if they capture the base point right now, they could probably make it to the, um, should probably make it to the base point. Uh, if they capture the B point right now, they could probably capture some base point. AHA should just go straight in it. There's no time to wait. Every second counts right now. But, again, Phalanx units very strong from the front. You never want to take a polearm unit from the front. But getting completely surrounded here could easily swing some, sweep them up. So phalanx units get swept up fairly easily. Still a spare Phalanx unit here. Off to a really bad start. Just need to survive right now. Nomads don't need to win. Now, as long as they have people on the base point, and I don't think they will be able to get the A point at this point. Really bad performance here out from Nomads. I thought they would, they could close it off strong, but definitely do, does look like uh, AHA took advantage of their over-aggressiveness, completely surrounding that formation. The base point is not open just yet. May as well just start fighting it, but we close up with that was pretty good. I definitely saw that pressure was mounting against AHA to make a move when the range units hit the field. Pressure is insane. When you're getting shot, when you're taking damage, you don't know what to do. You just feel like you're under pressure. And I commend Nomads for bringing Rattan Marksmen, especially three of them. They brought three Rattan Marksmen for that. And we see a lot of congratulations for uh, Nomads for winning this battle. The thing I see in this game is that when you play Normal Siege, some people um, sometimes won't sync with their strategy. But in CBL, we have the chance to see more real sync attacks or defense, which is spectacular. Ah, yes. When 15 people work together, it looks like magic. Cypher, um, N hat Cypher, I totally agree with you. CBL is, is something that you wish your game looked like. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that not every game of CB looks like this. But it's exciting to see when these when these things work out. I really hope, I really wish No Bad goes far. I do know that they are on a losing streak, so I think this would be their one win so far. But from this particular match, I enjoyed it from start to finish. There was a little bit of slow, there was a little bit of disappointing things, but a lot of things, a lot of things went very well and when you have two teams form and strategies that don't have any particularly strong or kind of like dominating side it just makes for an enjoyable viewing experience i do think aha and nomads put up a good fight against each other and i definitely do think that 
AHA um, probably learned a lot from Nomads, but I am I am particularly happy about how Nomads kind of changed up their formula, but was still able to express certain aspects of just like their their knowledge or their strength as a team. Besides the finish there, I definitely do think the Phalanx was overly aggressive. Thank you so much for the five subs, man. I will... Congrats. Well, since it's Anonymous Gifter, I definitely can't um, thank you enough. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm just going to just double check some of the finish. Girl, stop rambling. Rambling? What? What else am I supposed to do? That's it. I mean, there's not, no more matches. I think on the 7th, so not tomorrow, but on Friday, we'll have the final group stage for the APAC. And then there'll be the regional tournament that should have the first and second of each division fight off against each other. Yeah, there'll be several days of that. Alrighty, so just quick recap, SKT versus LDA, LDA forfeits the first match, SKT wins second match, so SKT takes the victory in that matchup, we also had TFA versus YYY, TFA forfeiting both of the matches, meaning that YYY wins by default, for TRT we had um, TRT versus STD we have saw um, I know that STD apparently won both the attack and the defense closing off that two to one against here um, TRT and of course we watched the nomads versus um, AHA nomads doing a wonderful job on their attack and their field battle I definitely do think they're uh, I definitely do think their defense started off strong, just the attack from AHA was very, very, very strong. Really, I think Nomads just could, didn't have a very, um, very good strategy when, uh, when AHA did approach the point. And when the going gets tough, um, and you don't have the strategy, it just, you just completely fall over. But... Um, that is all for tonight. We have Friday, so we'll come back on Friday. We'll have the finals. Uh, we'll have the. F um, we'll, that will be the last day for the group stages, which are for the first round. We have FNR versus TLDR, BOD versus GNG, MKT versus DOC, and VHN versus AP. So the second round is uh, sorry. So the second round will have MKT versus DOC, uh, VHN versus AP. Realistically, I kind of want to see the BOD versus GNG and MKT versus DOC. But if you guys got a preference, please do tell me and I'll see which one that is. Oh, and a party just raided me. Hello, Yi Quin Chopper. Let me see if I can just chain... If I can just chain raid someone else at this point. Who's not closing up? So he just raided me just now. Yeah, just let me, just give me two seconds. I gotta find someone who's not just gonna, who's not just going to stop streaming in two seconds. <laughs> I 
Alright, I'm not exactly sure who this streamer is, but it is a VTuber, so I hope I hope you guys enjoy her stream and you support all uh, Conqueror's Blade. Uh, well, I just hope you enjoy the stream. You don't have to support all Conqueror's Blade streamers or anything. Just hopefully you just find it fun. Nevertheless, that will be all for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. But other than that, my name's Zetsukai. Have a nice day. Bye for now. And thank you for enjoying Cypher.